Part 1 How do verbal and nonverbal communications affect the diversity in a workplace, particularly in the hospitality industry? So what is up everyone? My name is JD Garcia and I'm from the course and section BSHM11. And today I'm going to answer one of the 41 questions that Mom Donna gave to us. So the question that, that I chose was the question number 15. How do verbal and nonverbal communication affects the diversity in a workplace, particularly in the hospitality industry? So my answer was, successful interaction at work depends on both managers and their employees' team's ability to use and read body language. A manager communicating positive nonverbal cues when speaking with employees can increase employees' morale as well as their job's performance. Nonverbal communication is a process of generating meaning using behavior other than words. This is the verbal communication, other than words. Nonverbal communication affects verbal communication in that it can implement, reinforce, substitute, or contradict verbal messages. That is all. Peace. When is the customer wrong when in fact the customer is always right? The saying customer is always right was made with the aim to please the customer and give a satisfactory service. Despite this goal, we all know that no one is always right whether they are a customer or a server. There are times that the employee knows more about the matter compared to the customer does the customer not always being right? Also, there can be scenarios that the customer makes a mistake making them wrong. Overall, this saying pertains to the idea to satisfy the customers and give them the thing that, may, that they are looking for in the store. But when it comes to the area um, where the employee would have more knowledge that saying would not apply to that. Why do you want to pursue a hospitality management course? Many people had many reasons why they choose hotel management. But in my view, the world's happiest moment for me was that movement when someone was happy with me. In my society, people only give importance to science and many parents want to make their child doctor, engineer, teacher, like that. So I want to break this concept of my society that all subjects are equally important. Many people become successful in this industry and many people become at fault. It depends on us what we become in my life. In my view, hotel management is an opportunity to get a job it is an opportunity to improve our self-confidence and it is an opportunity to change yourself in the right direction by controlling your anger. What do you think are the challenges one will face if employed in a cruise ship or airline industry? Is safety still an issue when traveling in a cruise or via online? Nowadays, I believe it will not a big issue if they have family working on a cruise ship or a line. With the technology that we have, it is very easy to communicate through online, share moments with our loved ones. Only disagree is that they are not physically there to celebrate with them. Uh, the only with them. The only issue I can think right now is that they're safe. Of course, we all know they've, they've been roaming around the world and the working itself is not easy. Every day is a challenge and there are surprise, but but just believe that they can all go home safe and be with fair families and of these days. How does clothing or dressing up add to physical attractiveness? How does clothing or dressing measure one's personality? Dressing good cannot only boost your self-esteem, 
but it will also attract and impress others. That is why, to obtain respect in the job, proper grooming and professional appearance are essential. Your appearance and behavior make an impression on the individual with whom you work with. Clothing or dressing up measures one's personality, shows respect and politeness to others around you. Otherwise, your awful personal appearance would give everyone a negative impression of you. What qualities do you think will you contribute to your team? So my answer is, a team is a similar to a family since you're the ones who will work together and lift each other up. But I believe my contribution to my team will be that they will have fun, active listening, trusted individuals, and most importantly, I will not abandon them on my on any assignment. We will collaborate to find a solution to the problem. This is beneficial for them since they will love work love working with me because I will make them up and remove their tension. What do you think is your greatest professional weakness that can affect your career in the hospitality industry? How do you cope with it? My greatest professional weakness is my short tempered head and my sarcasm towards people I don't like and I don't even know in the first place. And this can affect my career in the hospitality industry by means of having a very bad first impression, ruining my reputation, and also the company's reputation that I'm working with. And I can cope up with this by changing my mindset and being calm towards people's opinion and treating the people around me with hospitality, respect, and a good attitude. And also by means of not taking others' opinion personally and addressing this opinion accordingly. And also by having a positive mind and attitude towards what I am doing in the work. And lastly, working with a smile and positive thinking can help me lift the mood and cope with this weakness. Part 2 Topic 6 Hospitality Industry Trends, Technology and Customer Experience So hello, I'm back again. So for the part 2 of this video, we are tasked to choose one topic out of the 9 topics that Mom Donna gave to us. So the topic that I have chosen was Hospitality Industry Trends, Technology and Customer Experience. So since we only have limited time to discuss a lot of topics, in the trends of hospitality industry, I'm only going to discuss one, which is online booking. Where in online booking or online reservation system is a software where you can use for managing reservations for your service. Basically, an online reservation system allows a potential customer to book and pay for a service directly through the use of the internet and their electronic devices on hand. This is particularly convenient given the time of the pandemic in this time of year. So online booking is one of the trend in hospitality industry and that's all. Topic for dealing with difficult customers effectively. Hi each and every one of you, this is Alkea Mimokua from BSHM11 and for today's video I will discuss what I have learned from this subject, dealing with difficult customers effectively. If you're in a customer facing role, you will often have to deal with people who are aggressive, abusive, unreasonable or even reasonable people who are simply stressed out. So how do you make this conversation easier and less stressful? for you and your customer. The first tip is show them you understand. If you feel the customer is justified in their anger, let them know that you're on their side. Say things like, you're right, or I'm going to prioritize this issue for you, and show them that you are their advocate within the company. The second tips are be quick to apologize. Apologize even when it's not your fault. Nearly every customer comes down, so you should sum up the blame, but make sure you do not apologize too much and sound sincere in the process. The third tips are set expectations. 
If a customer is rude, simply let them know that you will not respond to further inquiries until they change the way they talk to you. This way, they will have to become less abusive or threatening in order to get help. The four tips are train yourself. Train yourself in skills like anger management, stress management, and negotiation that are important to successfully manage difficult customers. And lastly, face it on. Don't shy away from dealing with a difficult customer unless it's necessary. The relationship forged with the customer after a difficult conversation is much stronger than the ones forged after a nice conversation. Topic 2 Conflict Management Skills Disciplining and Handling Work Performance Problems For the part 2 question, I choose Conflict Management Skills Disciplining and Handling Work Performance Problems. This conflict develops when participants and interconnected project network must, co must coordinate their tasks so that everyone can complete their tasks successfully. For example, an accountant can't do their job without all the numbers if an employee is constantly with their reports. It affects the accountant's ability to finish up and make deadlines. The solution is communicate with the team the importance of responsibility and accountability, clarify what everyone should be doing in their role so they're all on the same page when deadline approach. Topic 2 Conflict Management Skills Disciplining and Handling Work Performance Problems The Part 2 question is Complete management skills and discipline in handling work performance problem. Complete management skills in this issue many of us stand not proper their time because of lack of discipline and skills handling errands of any aspect of works. In result to them felt like us. For example, I have many of the line in passing all the requirements, but my priority is to have fun and enjoy with my family and my friends. Topic for dealing with difficult customers effectively. When dealing with different customers, a very easy way to deal with them is to empathize. Put yourself in their shoes and consider what might have irritated them. Then, work on simplifying the situation. Always address them with politeness, a good tone, and willingness to listen to whatever they want to say. Another technique is that, make them feel valued. If they are mean to you, don't get angry with them. Instead, maintain a professional attitude and complete the task at hand. As dealing with difficult clients, is part of our work. We should always refrain from retaliating and mistreating them. Topic 8 Nonverbal Language Communication So hi guys, my name is John Christopher Edra from Base HM11. So the topic that I choose is nonverbal language or communication. So let's start. Nonverbal communication is a method of communicating in which you do not talk but send a message or signal. According to the survey, this is the crucial role of communication because only 35% use verbal communication and 65% use nonverbal communication. There are types of nonverbal communication or the form of nonverbal communication, and this is eye contact. Facial expression, posture, haptics or touch, gesture, and personal space. So, I will explain the form of nonverbal communication. So, let's start with eye contact. Eye contact with the person you are talking to indicates that you are focused and paying attention. So, the facial expression can communicate anger, sadness, and fear. And the posture are important and convey messages. Haptics or touch is all about using sense of touch. 
Gesture is non-verbal communication or non-vocal communication in which observable body motion convey specific messages. So the personal space is when they invade their personal space, they may experience discomfort, rage, or worry. Personal space is being enroached upon. So, thank you. Topic 1. How to become an effective team member. Teams that work in strategies for manager. Hello everyone. I'm Rob Maran from the ACHM11. And in today's video, I'm going to share with you on what I have learned from Module 1, which is being an effective team member. Being an effective team member also means being a good leader. Because in some point in the organization, you will also lead someone who is new to the job or organization. And before you become a good leader, you must first become a good team member by means of displaying and contributing your skills to the company or organization so that they can grow to be better and once you become an effective team member you can be a great leader in conclusion in life in order for us to become successful we must be a good follower so that others will follow us